things real quick we're we gonna, have less than 20 boxes yeah so if you're thinking about getting an box, we're shipping them this week next week week after um, lots of good guesses probably are what box 12 is however I can tell you they're about to be gone this is it you should get one Adabox. how will you know if your guess is right yeah. you should subscribe this is it but we're we're out of the thousands and thousands, thousands that we ship out we only have probably and, 20 left right now yeah about okay. 20 Okay. Okay, starting off, we got these in stock finally. Yay, it's been a year in the making, but we now have Circuit Playground Expresses in beautiful uh, 4H green. And on the back, we've got the 4H logo, which is not a trademark. It's a special 18 USC so 707. Yeah, so it's one of the same type of marks that the government can give you approval for, much like Woodsy the Owl or Smokey the Bear or like the Olympic Rings. There's these, all the, they're, or like Boy Scouts, Scouts, the name Scouts. Yeah. There's things that the, the, the U.S. government decided, let's not have it as regular trademark. Let's make this super thing. And we had to apply for it, and um, it, it happened. So it's Check here. it out. Yeah, I'll show it off. It's beautiful. So the final one has uh, gold pads, so it doesn't oxidize. It's exactly the same code and layout as a normal Circuit Playground Express. It's got the microphone, speaker, switches, buttons, sensors, LEDs. I think it's see on the back, uh, it just has the FCC CE marking and yep. the 4 H marking logo. Um, of course, you don't have to use this for your Circuit Playground projects, but if you are in 4-H, wouldn't it be cool um, to make your next agricultural, technolog technolog bleh, agricultural technology project with a green 4-H Circuit Playground board? And uh, we'll soon have um, some of these boards in the 4-H shop as well. So that's pretty exciting. And yep. then we'll do some projects with 4-H. Uh, so as you get maybe this summer, if you and your group of 4-H people in your community want to build soil sensors or activity monitors, um, capacitive touch or uh, environmental sensing, you can do that with Circuit Playground Express. Next up, we've got the Great Fit one from Great Scott Gadgets. I love uh, this open source company. They're just so fun and so cool. Of course, it's open source hardware. It even has the marking on the back. It says, uh, be neighborly. And it's kind of this interesting thing. It's got this LPC 4300 on it. This is this mega Cortex M4. So it even has, I think, a Cortex M0 as well. And it's got two USB ports. And it can do one host and um, one peripheral. And so it's actually kind of like an in-betweener. Like, of course, you can use it as a normal breakout board. And it's got all of these um, pins available. Uh, that you can program in, I think, probably as embed support. And of course, it has uh, you know GCC support. But also, it acts as an in-between. So if you want to have a uh, reverse engineering USB or you want to like, um, you know, take data from USB and analyze it, this could be a really good tool because, again, it has both the USB client and host capabilities. Um, so we've got these gadgets installed. I think, you know, this is for like kind of reverse engineering with hardware. If you're, if you're into that, um, you're going to be into this. Their boards are always so wonderful. I just got a shout out to like Great Scott and Travis Goodspeed and uh, that whole crew. Okay. Everything yeah, they do is, is so awesome. And it's a beautiful board too. White. It's hard to make white PCBs look good. Yeah. Um, and they do. So there you go. Really lovely. Nice work on this design. Beautiful board. Okay. It's a great for one. Great for reverse engineering, hacking, and USB stuff. We've got from Brian who's been doing hardware engineering with us for a couple of months now. The LPS35HW, this is a really cool sensor. It's a temperature and pressure sensor, um, but unlike most of these, it's actually designed to be used in damp environments. It's kind of got this protective epoxy around it, and inside it's also got a um, moisture barrier. So not a lot of pressure sensors can be used. It can actually be used underwater, I believe, as well, uh, although I haven't tested it underwater. We've, we've tested it in environments and it works fine. I will note that if you want to use it underwater in a very damp environments, you'll have to epoxy the rest of the board because the sensor is water resistant, but the rest of the PCB assembly is not because we don't know what you want to use it for. So we kind of just made it inexpensive and simple. So um, use epoxy if you would like to uh, use this in a damp environment. But if you want to just evaluate this chip, um, this board is great. And here's a demo and I'll show off it's very responsive. So here's the pressure and sensor. If I put my finger over it, you can see um, it has a very high precision. 
and it's very accurate as well. It's a very nice sensor. This is from ST. Usually we have our temperature and barometric pressure sensors from Bosch, but ST has been coming out with some good stuff as well. So uh, nice work from them. You can use I2C or SPI um, with this device, and we have both uh, CircuitPython and Arduino libraries. Okay, next up. This screen, we had a couple people who said, oh, you know, I, I broke my Pi Portal screen or my Pi TFT Plus. Can I just get the TFT? Well, we now have it. Um, I really like these displays. They're from um, DisplayWorks, which is uh, my TFT supplier, and they're great. Um, these are 50-pin uh, connector TFTs. Uh, you get uh, SPI or you get 8-bit, you, you know, 80, 80, 60, 800, 16-bit. 88 or 1600, as well as you can put it into a true yeah, V-Sync, H-Sync um, LCD mode. I haven't actually used them in that mode, but I'm, I'm sure it works in that mode um, because the chipset supports it, the ILI9341. If you uh, break or crack the display, um, pop these in, and then you know we have a breakout in the store as well if you want to just uh, connect it up. Okay, next up. Next up, um, coming soon, we have the starter kit for the Pi Gamer. We're gonna be putting more of these in stock this week, promise. Uh, we made some today, but uh, we've actually canceled that a little fast. Um, this starter kit has everything you need. So you get the fully assembled Pi Gamer board. You get the acrylic case here shown with the paper protective cover on it, uh, as well as the screws put together. You get um, a small 8 ohm speaker, which is nice and loud. Uh, you get uh, a 350 milliamp hour battery, so it lasts about four to seven hours, depending on how loud you're playing music and how bright the backlight is. And you get an assortment of uh, buttons, uh, caps, to uh, customize what colors you'd like, as well as a protective case to hold the whole thing together. And I thought I'd just show the Pi Gamer off, just to show here's what it looks like when it's fully assembled. Um, so I can show up the pieces. So you can see the PCB underneath, and you've got this kind of cool, half-translucent smoke acrylic. Um, the button caps, which you can customize. So we, I put the red and white ones on, but they come in a variety of colors. So you can see yellow and gray as well. Um, you got the analog joystick and the buttons, of course. Uh, micro USB, we set button, uh, stereo headset on off, SD card. Um, the feather headers are exposed, so if you want to plug in feathers, you can do that. Uh, they can make a little uh, sensor game, or you can connect a thermal camera, or Wi-Fi. I actually connected the Wi-Fi airlift. And yeah, you can do Wi-Fi stuff on the, um, on the Pi Gamer. Uh, the speaker plugs in over here. The battery plugs in over here into this little cavity. And then you've got some stemma connectors on the bottom as well. And then this is running uh, the Trash Panda game. So you, if you would like to uh, make, uh, make code arcade games, or if you would like to uh, play the NES emulator, well, loud, uh, you can do that with this starter kit and there's no soldering required. Okay. And next, uh the star of the show tonight besides you, Lady Ada, and the community is this. Yay, this is the GPS USB, which I think people want. Nobody has actually asked for this, um, but I think people want it because I see people using our Ultimate GPS, which is a really great GPS module, and they want to connect it to Linux computers and they don't want to take up a UART, um, because maybe you don't have a lot of UART, so you want to use USB. So this is basically the Ultimate GPS board, and I just made it a little bit bigger, and I added uh, Scilab 2104 USB serial adapter on there, which is my favorite USB serial adapter right now. Regulator and of course uh, micro USB connector as well as the four USB pins. So if you want to like hardwire it into something, like sometimes you have like an embedded Linux board where like USB is actually just pads, you don't even have to use a cable, you can just solder the four wires together and it will enumerate. And then um, RX and TX LEDs as well as a um, uh, external antenna option. So if you plug in an antenna, it will automatically switch over to the external antenna to give you that boost. Um, other than that, it works just like the Ultimate GPS that you know and love. And we've uh, in the um, tutorial, we've just added a couple photos and uh, shown you how to use it with Python. And if you want to use the pulse per second, so the GPS module, of course, you know, it gets an NMEA data out. It tells you location, the time. But if you want for using this as an NTP server or something, you want to get that pulse per second, which will um, get you the nanosecond-ish precision of when the actual seconds turn over, because the data coming out of the serial is delayed by a couple milliseconds usually, because it actually has to get transmitted. Um, so there is a pulse per second that comes out, 
and it's connected to the ring indicator pin on the Scilabs chip. So if you're using Python, you can use PySerial to read the PPI, uh, the, the PPS from the ring indicator pin just by reading like, it's like PySerial.ri and it will toggle high and low based on um, the PPS signal. So that's how I got, there's like one thing that basically, you know, you can't get from NMEA data. Uh, it is available, but you'll just have to use whatever serial software you're using, the interface code, to read the ring indicator pin. So that's the only thing that's a little unusual about it. Other than that, it's just a, a GPS module, Ultimate GPS, I love this module. Um, it's just really fast, uh, low power, um, especially with external antenna, you know, it works really great. It's kind of overall does everything you ever want from a USB uh, GPS device. Okay, and what's that, Lady Ada? New, 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 new.